Hello, my name is John Foster and I'm one of the instructors at the art department and this video is just a, a brief introduction of myself to you guys and um, I had a little slideshow here and um, some, hopefully some pieces you recognize and, uh, and I'm, some I'm sure you haven't seen and maybe you haven't seen most of them but I've been working for well, I don't know over 15 years as a as an illustrator, and most of the most of the work I do is uh, book cover work. Um, it, it started off with science fiction fantasy, and then I started doing book cover or comic book cover work, uh, and then that a lot of that just kind of rolled over into um, doing young adult books, which I I love the uh, the storytelling behind the young adult books and the, the, the magic, the whimsy. Um, things could be a little bit more symbolic and metaphorical and that seemed to fit well with me and uh, things that I like to paint. And um, so I'm just going through some of these uh, these older works that I've uh, done over the years and into some of the comic book stuff. Um, it's been a great joy to do this, but it was a long time uh, in making happen. Um, anybody that's seen a presentation uh, given by me uh, has heard the story about uh, me uh, going to several schools, trying to figure out what I want to do, finally, uh, finally ending up at Rhode Island School of Design, although they didn't accept me the first time around, and I had to go uh, on, I was on academic probation from another school, another art school. And, uh, and, but I did very, I put my, you know, uh, put my head to it and, and did well and then reapplied. I just, um, wanted, I liked Providence area, it fit me better. Uh, it, and then when I graduated, so when I graduated, I was around, um, 25 and, um, I did a lot of, I tried, I thought I would get work, you know, right off the bat, but I, I did not. And, uh, you know, a little teeny job here, there, a little teeny job there but you know basically I just worked at a, an art store and or you know as a clerk at Staples or, or as a circulation clerk in a library all these various jobs things just trying to make ends meet and um, then and it took about eight years after graduating from college that things started to roll I started to I started getting better I started getting my portfolio together and people started to take a little bit of a notice and I think a lot of that notice came through Spectrum and entering into the Spectrum books. And um, as a matter of fact, one of my first big professional jobs came from uh, someone seeing work in Spectrum and uh, giving me a call and started a nice work relationship over at uh, Wizards of the Coast with the, at the time, the TSR brand and uh, gave me an opportunity to do a lot of, did a lot of interior work black and white interior work and uh, but in doing that and putting my all into that work they got me some cover some cover work as well and then I could get in the spectrum hopefully for the next year and then uh, then get a little bit more notice and things just slowly started to grow um, but you know it's uh, everybody matures at different rates and comes into their own you know at, at their own pace so don't kick yourself, or, or maybe you are. I've, I've met a lot of people that, you know, right out of school, they're, they're going in and working and making the connections. Um, and then some aren't, and some, you know, like me, it just takes some more time uh, before you get to move along and have your dreams start to happen. But the main thing is interest, passion, and a little bit of obsessiveness. You don't want that negative obsessiveness. You, you know, you don't want to be freaking out, but you want to be kind of obsessed about, like, I want to keep doing this. I have to get back to the to the canvas, back to back to the computer. I need to keep making things happen. I need to keep getting better. And you know, with that, I think that's where talent lies. It's not something I think you're born with. Um, a good friend of mine and excellent artist well known as Greg Manchester and he's also a, an advocate of that it's it's practice it's practice 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 and um, and the, the way you want to keep practicing is loving what you're doing and having a passion about it 
So we're, we've, with, on the slides we've gone I've been going through, we're getting uh, into more recent, not you know, a few years ago or maybe five or six years ago, but some of the, a lot of the young adult books, um, a lot of fun. I have tons of uh, influences that I, you know, that I embrace that I love from, from, from the past and say the great storytellers, uh, Wyeth, Pyle, um, Dunn, Cornwell, Rackham, of course, to more present, George Pratt, and always there was Kent Williams, uh, of course, Phil Hale and Rick Berry, and even more recently, uh, some of the young artists like Tolmer Hanukkah, I don't know they pronounce that correctly, uh, and um, James Jean, um, and many others I'm, I'm, that are you know, still growing and moving. Oh, gosh, uh, uh, Ferguson. And now I've forgotten. I've, oh, that's terrible. I should have it written down. Um, Adam Rex. And um, trying to remember the, the, the name. I'm sorry, I've forgotten. I'm going to go look it up. Peter. Peter Ferguson. Let's see, we didn't have to do that. So let's go back into play. All right. I don't know. Um, just, you know, you need to embrace your influences. You need to learn from them. You, at times, on your own, on your own work and for what you're doing, just just for yourself, is emulation is even fine. But you you can only you you can't be them. You just need to have the influence of them. Take something of that that away, and you mix it in like as a ingredients in a soup basically and all of it's coming together and you're making the soup and this special soup with all these different ingredients from your influences of you know various people come together and to be something else and something new hopefully so and here's here's a definite this one was an influence directly by Lion Decker JC Lion Decker um, and I did get the chance to move in to do some editorial work and work on National Geographic, which um, I'm always open for being able to get, not define myself as a particular artist, a science fiction fantasy artist, or only a comic book artist. I think that that would be too confining, and um, you know, I, I'm more adventuresome uh, than that, and I would think that getting stale and, and bored with what you're doing could just be the worst thing. So keeping keeping all those doors open and experimenting and going around looking for those possibilities of doing this different kind of work. This one was definitely influenced by what was going on with James Jean and the idea of color, pattern, and texture as well as realism mixed together, these different visual languages and how they could work together fascinated me. I think we're getting close to the end of some of these slides, but so now I've been uh, been working as an illustrator for a while, still doing book covers, still enjoy sometimes the comic books. Uh, I do some concept work uh, for game companies and um, some storyboarding for you know, small small little movie companies, and uh, and you know just trying to keep my hand in in all of it and interest and and wanting to get better and. You know, it's just what keeps keeps me going, and again, as I said, the practice, but also practice because you really love what you're doing, and that that is one of the biggest benefits of all. Move along here, and I also do some things for some friends. You know, some pinup stuff, and that's great because then you can. It's published. You're not getting paid, so you get to do whatever you want and make whatever you want. And sometimes those are often the best works. I don't know that everybody likes this piece, but I do. <laughs> so, and that's important. But anyways, uh, you know, it's a brief introduction, and I hope that I get to see you guys and talk to you guys and see your work in class.